Now we're going to look at the eigenvalues for some different operators for these hydrogen atom wave functions, these psi and LM of the spherical polar coordinates r, theta, and phi. So these operators that we're looking at are the Hamiltonian, which for the hydrogen atom is just the kinetic energy of the electron minus h bar squared over 2 times mass of the electron times uh, Laplacian operator, the del squared minus e squared, its charge, the magnitude of its charge, squared over 4 pi epsilon naught r. That's just the Coulomb force between the proton fixed at the origin and the electron. And we have this L squared operator, the total, total angular momentum squared operator, which is minus h bar squared times this uh, complicated part of the Laplacian for spherical polar coordinates. These are uh, factored out the 1 over r squared term on the second and third terms here and it's without the r part which is also in here. You can look up the total value of this Laplacian from previous videos. And we also have the component of angular momentum in the z direction which is just minus i h bar partial derivative with respect to phi, the azimuthal angle in the x y plane. And then we also know from the rigid rotor videos that this is the same angular momentum and angular momentum components operator that we were looking at before and L squared is LX squared plus LY squared plus LZ squared so this LZ if you square that and then add in the same thing for X and Y you will get this total angular momentum operator so we have these wave functions which depend on three quantum numbers N, L, and M and for each of these wave functions for each of the quantum numbers each of these wave functions should have a distinct set of eigenvalues to distinguish them from all of the other eigenfunctions of the Hamiltonian. So we need to see what happens when we have these various operators act on a given wave function which is specified by the three quantum numbers n, l, and m. So if we have h acting on psi n, l, m of spherical polar coordinates r, theta, and phi, what you'll get back out there is just the Schrodinger equation, the rest of it, En psi NLM. So the energy only depends on the quantum number N, as we've seen. And to remind ourselves, this En, as I'll write down here, is going to be equal to minus Me e to the fourth, so mass times charge uh, to the fourth, over 8 epsilon naught squared Planck's constant squared times 1 over n squared. So it depends inverse quadratically on n. Then for the L squared operator, if we have L squared acting on the wave function, these wave functions are also going to be eigenfunctions of L squared. And the eigenvalues you get are the same eigenvalues we got for the rigid rotor, h squared L times L plus 1. And those, in those videos, we referred to that as J, but J and L are the same thing, just different letter used to refer to the same thing. We have to use as many different letters as possible to be as confusing as possible, I suppose. But J and L are, in fact, the same thing. Then we have... LZ, which can act on these wave functions, and give us a distinct eigenvalue so that we can see the value of M. And that's just going to be H bar M times the wave function again. So if you're given a certain wave function, which you think is a wave function of, a hydro of the hydrogen atom, you can act on it with these three operators and then see what these eigenvalues are and you could determine what the values of n, l, and m are from that. You could determine what the value of n is, you could determine l, what type of orbital it is, and m, its orientation in space. So you could figure out uh, if it was a 2px orbital or a 3d z squared orbital, etc. So this is all important because if we want to have a distinct set of eigenvalues and or quantum numbers for our given wave functions. 
So let me draw here. I'm going to have energy going up on this y-axis here. And this is going to be in units of me e to the fourth over 8 epsilon naught squared h squared. So basically a unit to where minus let me go lower if I can. Sorry, I spread things out. So that minus one down here is going to be our lowest energy uh, solution. Then we're going to have n equals two at one fourth up there. Um, have n equals three at one ninth. N equals four at one sixteenth. So let me just label those. Again, crude and approximate, but not too worried about that. Okay, so let's mark. So we have one energy level down at n equals 1. Our degeneracy is n squared, so at n equals 2, we said we had four distinct states here. At n equals 3, we're going to have nine distinct states. And remember, within any value of n, all of the energies are completely equivalent. They are equal, they are degenerate. So 7, 8, 9. And then lastly, I'm going to draw at n equals 4 because it's going to get very complicated and very unwieldy very fast. 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15 and 16. You can see there's going to be more and more levels very, very close in here. It's going to become a mess very quickly. Okay, so let's mark our n equals 0 states here. n equals 1 for all of these. n equals 2. And, oh, sorry, don't want to do it that way. We want to, that's important to remember as well almost tripped up myself. You have n equals 1 is the ground state, n equals 2, n equals 3. It's important to remember what the lowest possible value of n is for each given model problem. As you saw, I just messed that up. Okay, then we have values of L that are possible. And down here we're going to have L equals 0. At n equals 2, we can have 0 and 1. It's going to be three states with L equals 1. We can have 0, 1, and 2 at n equals 3. Then at n equals 4, we start getting very, very busy. If I can mark all of these. 3, 2, 1, 0. And then these will all have distinct uh, values of m and eigenvalues of lz and for n equals 0 it's just 0 for n equals 2 the l equals 0 has a 0 m equals 0 state n equals 2 l equals 1 has 1 0 and minus 1 n equals 3 we have s p and d orbitals with n equal l equals 0 1 and 2 so we have values of m being 0 1, 0, minus 1, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2. <clears throat> and lastly, as you can see, the pattern will be extending. We have s, p, d, and f orbitals, so 4s, 4d, 4, 4s, 4p, 4d, 4f. Values of m, 0, 1, 0, and minus 1 for the p's, from 2 to minus 2 for the d's, and for the f orbitals, 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. So for every possible state of this hydrogen atom, within these three different operators, there, are, there will never be any two states which give all three eigenvalues which are the same, which have all three quantum numbers that are the same. So all of these states are distinguishable by at least one of these operators that we see here. And this is going to be important as we start putting um, electrons in these orbitals or as we look at uh, more complicated atoms because <clears throat> we're going to have to consider the fact that for any quantum state we're going to have to have a set of eigenvalues 
or a set of quantum numbers which distinguishes these states from one another. So that's what we'll be looking at a little bit down the road, but this is uh, just to impress that point now, so when we look at that in the future, it's not a very foreign concept why we need uh, distinct operators and eigenvalues and quantum numbers for all these different states.